Hey Gear Seekers, I'm Nick. Today we're checking out a brand new case from Fantex. It's a bit of a twist on the P360 that released last year. This is the P360A. It's an airflow focused version of that case with an open mesh front and it costs around 70 US dollars. Let's check it out and then do a build. As usual with these builds and these case videos, we build with parts that we have on hand. We don't go out and buy hardware for these builds and we usually pick hardware that's generally going to get pretty hot so we can give you guys some accurate thermals. So yeah, let's take a closer look. All right, let's start off by removing the panels. It's got a TG side panel. It's got captive thumb screws that hold it in and the panel just slides off the little latch like that. As we flip the case around, you'll notice that the paint finish is super reflective. So it is a very glossy piano-like finish, although it's not piano black, it's, it's a white color. We'll just pull this panel off as well so we can take a bit of a look. And let's quickly just pull off that front panel as well because with these smaller Fantex cases, the hard drive mounting is from the front. So we just give it a yank and away she goes. All right, while we've got the front panel off, let's have a look at what we've got up the front. There's two pre-installed 120 mil RGB fans, they're addressable RGB. You can do up to a 280 mil radiator at the front or a 240 mil rad at the front. Uh, there's also two hard drive sleds for spinning rust which is down the bottom. It's got all the included accessory box that Fantex traditionally does. The sleds are the standard Fantex toolless design ones. Basically, they've just got clips on either side, put the drive in, clip them in, and you're good to go. Inside the accessory box, you've got standard things like zip ties or tweezers or whatever you want to call them, <laughs> and also all the screws required for building your PC. On the back side of the case, we've got three spots to mount 2.5 inch SSD drives. It's got two sleds included with this. There's a cable routing channel with Velcro tie downs which aid in cable managing everything nice and cleanly. This is actually a nice solution. I really like this. It also allows you to expand the RGB. So if you wanna add other addressable RGB products, you can plug it straight in and use the built-in controller that is built into the top of this case. As well as being able to add to it, you also have this. This is the motherboard pass-through cable. So if you wanted to control this with something like AuraSync or Mystic Light or RGB Fusion, you can control all of the case lighting with this, if you plug this directly into your motherboard. The RGB controller does require you to actually use SATA power or SATA power. So you will need to plug this in for it to work. We do get comments from people quite often saying why the built-in RGB does not work on their case. And this is usually the reason because people will forget to plug these in. So if you're gonna be using the in-case lighting, make sure you do plug this in. As far as the basement is concerned and power supply clearance, without the hard drive cage, you're not really gonna have an issue fitting any power supply. You can actually remove this hard drive cage pretty easily. There's a bunch of screws on the inside of the case and underneath that allow you to remove it. So yes, if you do wanna put in a bigger power supply, you can do that. Otherwise, you're looking at about 160 mils max for the bottom for your power supply. For fan mounting, as I previously mentioned, you can do a 280 mil rad up the front. You can't put a 360 in the front. There is no opening towards the bottom for this, so it's not possible. You can also do a 240 or a 120 up the front. It's got the two 120 mils already installed. In terms of mounting at the top, you can do two 140 mil fans. You cannot do a 280 mil AIO unless the clearances are quite low, which is basically not gonna happen. You can do a 240 mil AIO up the top, which is, shouldn't be any problem at all. As well as that, there's a single 120 millimeter fan mount at the back of the case. In terms of motherboard support, you can put in an ATX motherboard with a maximum width of 280 millimeters, which I'm gonna say you could possibly pull off an EATX, although, oh yeah, I would have to test that, but I'm not gonna be doing that in this video. As far as GPU support, you can do a maximum of a 400 millimeter GPU. There's not many 400 mil GPUs out there, so you should be pretty good with fitting basically any GPU in here. 
unless you're front mounting the AIO. As well as doing a 400 millimeter GPU, which is, you're just not gonna find, you can also do a vertical GPU mount as well, because there is no cross bracing for the rear brackets here at all. You can pull them out, put a vertical GPU bracket in, no problem. Dust filtration is pretty straightforward as well. You've got a dust filter on the bottom for the power supply, and you've got a magnetic dust filter that goes on the top of the case because the mesh front actually acts as a dust filter as well. So you don't actually need any filtration from here. The mesh usually catches most of the dust anyway. And from experience using the P400A, I can tell you that that is also the case. As far as front panel connectivity, we've got some RGB switches for the built-in lighting controller. There's obviously a power button. There's two USB type A 3.0 ports and a headphone and a microphone jack as well. All right, ladies and gents, that's pretty much it as far as the case and its features. It's a pretty simple case. So I'm gonna stop talking and we're gonna start building. Let's get into it. Ladies and gents, you know what time it is. It's time to visit our mates over at Peel Corp. And if you want some Peel Corp merch of your own, there's a thing down here somewhere where you can go and grab it from the Gear Seeker store. Anyway, I'm gonna stop talking and we're gonna get Peel and we're gonna visit our mates. You guys ready? Let's do it, let's do it. Ooh, that's a nice one. That looks pretty good. All right, guys, let's, uh, let's engage cinematic mode, I guess, right? Yeah, let's do it.
ladies and gents, I hope you enjoyed the build in the brand new Fantax Eclipse P360 A. It's basically the same as the P360X, except with a mesh front. It's actually quite refreshing to do something that's not RTX 3000 at the moment. Yeah, I, I missed building if you couldn't tell. Anyway, let's uh, quickly take a look at the thermals. Now you're seeing the thermals on screen right before your very eyes. And what you're seeing is the thermals are decent. The problem that we're having with the thermals with this case is this cooler. It is not very good. Now, I suspect if we used a better cooler that didn't have an in-radiator pump, it would perform a whole lot better. But at the end of the day, the results aren't actually too bad. But yeah, I think there's a lot of room for improvement with a better cooler. So we will actually come back to this in the future with another build. But for now, these are the results that we had. And the reason why I picked this cooler as well is because I hadn't used it yet. And I wanted to see how it would perform. And uh, unlike the 360 mil version that MSI makes, this one's definitely not as good. All right, now that's out of the way, let's quickly chat about the parts. The CPU is the AMD Ryzen 7 3700X. The GPU is the MSI RTX 3080 Gaming X Trio. To cool the 3700X, we use the MSI 240 Core Liquid. For RAM, we went with 16 gigs of HyperX Fury at 3200 megahertz. The motherboard is the MSI B550 Tomahawk. For storage, we went with the brand new Samsung 980 Pro 1 terabyte. We actually did a video about it a couple days ago and you can check that out in the top right hand corner right about now. All the additional fans are MSI fans, I actually come with the Core Liquid coolers. I pulled one of the fans from one of the other Core Liquid coolers that we've got to make the, all three of these exactly the same. The RGB is set up through the controller built into the case. I didn't use anything else and I wanted to go unicorn spew because we haven't done it in a while and it looks kind of cool with this case. White cases usually diffuse the light quite well. However, the inside of this case is matte black, which looks pretty cool. I'm not gonna lie, I think the contrast here is really, really nice. A lot of people won't agree with that, but I think it's cool. As well as the top filter also being black, I like that, and the black accent on the front is really nice too. In terms of building in this case and the cable management, it's excellent, classic Fantex style, super easy to make everything fit. I even used a larger power supply than I would recommend just to see how it would go, and it fit no problem. Just want to circle back and quickly talk about the vertical GPU mounting. Now I used another vertical GPU bracket that I had. It's not the one that you can buy from Fantex, but you can get one from Fantex. As well as that, the thermals, we actually tested in the other orientation as well. And the thermals are exactly the same because this bracket does not sit up against the glass. It's not going to affect the thermals whatsoever. The included front fans, as well as them being addressable RGB, they are PWM as well which I didn't mention earlier in the video because I didn't realize that until I was building in it. And the maximum RPM on them is around 1400 RPM, which is actually fairly decent. And they're not too loud. They're about as loud as a Corsair LL fan. My conclusion on this case for $69, I think this is a fairly decent case. It's actually kind of growing on me. I love the look of it. The white version looks awesome. Now there's gonna be questions as to why I didn't use white components. The first reason is when I pulled it out of the box, I didn't realize it was white and I already set up all the motherboard and everything beforehand. Otherwise I would have used a white motherboard and some white memory. The other reason is I don't have a white GPU. So it would have looked quite weird. So I decided to do the opposite and go all black and all dark tones inside. But overall, I'm actually digging this glossy finish. Uh, I didn't realize there was an RGB strip down the bottom. I should have known better because the P360X had that as well. But yeah, I like it. I think it's pretty good. And for $69 or 70 US dollars or however much they're selling it for, this is like, this is like a budget air, a, let's say a budget focus airflow case. And I think with the included fans and the RGB strip, you're actually getting a fairly decent deal because these fans at the front, and I know people are gonna disagree and there's gonna be other YouTubers that come out and say this, they're not actually that loud. I think that's basically all for me. If you wanted to know what all the parts were that were using this build, there's a PC part picker list down below in the description and you can check everything out in the price and everything for all that down below. If you like the music you heard here, I make all the music, it's available over on our Patreon. And if you like this video, 
smash the like button. If you hated the video, hit the dislike button twice. Once again, thank you so very much for watching. I'm your boy, Nick with Gear Seekers. You peak. We seek. And I actually quite like this case. I, uh, I forgot what I was going to say. I actually quite like this case. It's better than I thought it was going to be. And if I seem a little bit tired, uh, we just switched to daylight savings here in Sydney and I'm exhausted. I've been trying to like fix my sleeping pattern, but I'm literally just exhausted. This RTX 3000 stuff and all the malarkey that went on with the drivers and all of the other stuff just took a toll on basically every tech tuber out there. And we're all feeling a bit tired at the moment. And that's the truth. Anyways, guys, hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching. Big cat. Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. How you doing, little buddy? Oh, look at that leg. <laughs> you are just about the cutest cat in the world. <laughs> big cat. Oh, it loves that. Okay, big cat. I gotta go now. I got stuff to do. <laughs> Alright, buddy. Goodbye. <laughs> Bye. He doesn't want me to go. Bye, big cat. Bye.